just want to give thanks to God for everything yes. He's done. Let us reflect on the week and just whatever we're feeling, let us put it into song and just praise Him with everything we have. Let us lay it down. I know that I interrupt you a lot by saying, come on, church. But it's just because I want you to feel what I'm feeling. To feel that Holy Spirit. So let me go ahead and just pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just give you all praise and glory. And we just thank you for letting us be here today, Lord. Let us pray for those who aren't able to be here, who are in pain, who are sick. And pray for those safely to get here that are on their way here, Lord. I just pray for the church and their families, Lord. I just lift them all up to you and just ask that you give them and fill them with the Holy Spirit, Lord, that you let them feel your presence at all times, whatever they're going through. Heal them physically, mentally, emotionally, financially, spiritually, Lord, because we lay it all at your hands and we just know that you're going to heal us. You're the greatest physician there is, there ever could be, Lord, and it just let us lay it down. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, church. <laughs>
He's uh, grateful to the Lord that he was able to provide assistance for the next three months for our sister Crystal. That, that was just, that is just, thank you, Jesus. He'll, God, God helps us out, even with those, those, I wouldn't say a mortgage is a major thing, you know, rent's a major thing, that's a major, but he helps you with those minor things, those major things. God just is good all the time and all the time. God is good. Amen, amen. And then, thinking of a, a brother that I haven't seen in a while, Nick, he joined us last week and he told us that because of God, he is able to get back into uh, work, get back to his job. So that's praise the Lord because he was out for a while. Yeah. I mean, he, he was out with uh, it said strep. And I, that, that, that's crazy, you know, like how strep throat can just knock you on your butt, you know, like how just something could come in and just derail you, right? It's like, oh, it's just a sore throat. And then all of a sudden, it's more than that, right? So. We're going to continue to uh, just thank the Lord for healing our brother and our sister. Speaking of healing, here's our brother right there, right here, right there, right there. <laughs> His knee is doing a lot better. I saw him earlier running around, so that, 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 that's exciting. You know, next week, jumping over the, <laughs> jumping for joy while we start singing for the Lord. I don't know. But all in all, we're just happy to see you. Remember that I'm glad your knee's feeling better. No surgery or nothing, right? Don't know yet. Don't know yet, but it's feeling better. All right, well, we'll take it. I'm excited about that. Then we're uh, thankful to the Lord. Well, I'm extremely thankful, but some of you guys express your thanks. But this is my little baby girl right here. Uh, she feels born on 12. That's her with her siblings right there. That's, uh, oh, man, we're, we're on cloud nine. You'll notice that um, my kids and mom are, are loving it, but uh, mom is feeling good. Maddie is feeling wonderful at home. She is. Uh, I like she's pretty much Wonder Woman in my eyes. I can't believe what she's doing. I got I think we went, we got to the hospital at um, on the 12th at 6:15. We were checked in, and then we left the next day at 6:30 p.m. So wow. so we're in there for 24 hours. <laughs> so yeah yeah, yeah all, all natural no 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 nothing like that. But uh yeah it was, it was pretty intense though because I think she started pushing at 7:11 and then. And then Abigail showed up at 719. Wow. So we were just kind of like, all right, so, so I, I just know not to mess with her. Like, I, always tell you, I just told the line. My wife tells me to do so. She says, jump, I say, uh -huh. no, I'm <laughs> But uh, I think my wife tells me to do We do have some prayer requests, so I definitely want to not miss out on mentioning these things. But here, um, our sister, Frankie Jackie, yeah, we got to meet them. Uh, wonderful people. We're still praying that their finances be replenished after the long move. I mean, we're going to continue to lift up our sister Jamie, who um, I haven't heard from her. She got the transfer that she's looking for, but she was hoping that uh, she gets a job transfer that is closer to home. As well as continuing to uh, pray for Virgil as he is just struggling with his addiction battle. And also Delia, who is a uh, Olive's daughter, who is struggling with that same battle. I mean, addiction is a real thing, and we want to continue to uh, pray for those who are struggling with it. And you know, if, they, if you don't want to talk about it, just let the elders know. We'll pray for you behind closed doors. You, you know, we don't need to put it on the screen. Yeah. We think there's power in prayer, so we think when there's numbers, we're, we're just going to amplify it. Yes. But you know, just know you got elders and pastors in this church that if you want to confide in them that you're struggling with a type of addiction or you have a certain prayer that is private, we go behind the room. We'll gladly pray for you guys, and, you know, in our own prayer time and as elders of the church. We're also um, continuing to, uh, this is a praise and a prayer, though. I put it on here because we're, we're excited. Um, our brother Morgan, he, he got promoted to general manager, right? Yeah, excited. But, but at the same time, we got promoted to general manager, so now we're going to be praying for him because, you know, um, everybody wants to leave until they start to leave, right? And it's one of those things where he was kind of voluntold that he was going to become a general manager. <laughs> you ever heard of voluntold? Yeah, he was like, like, we need somebody. You're the guy, right? And, and uh, so, you know, he says it's a wonderful opportunity, but we know managing a whole store and a team on top of that is going to be waiting. So we won't need, we actually, he called me today and said, sadly, he won't be in service for a couple of weeks as he gets things together. So just keep lifting him up in your prayers. Um, actually, that's another thing I might want. So Morgan and Trent help us out with the sound. And if any of you guys feel led to maybe want to help out in that way, 
you know, just kind of be, get here a little earlier on Sunday, maybe come on Wednesdays to help out with the worship team. Maybe the, they can show you how to get in there and help because every, every everything everything is, is, is for the benefit of the kingdom. Even the person in the background who's just doing the that's why when I go up there, everything gets messed up. So I'm, you know, they're like, you can't hear no mics, everything's messed up. Who was up here? And I'm all, Pastor Duran was up there. Oh, man. So, so if you guys can help out with that, but we're going to continue to pray for Morgan. Um, our brother Dave, he wanted us to pray for his sister, um, Nora Lebron, who, um, who she's uh, battling with uh, stage one cancer right now at 60 years of age. Um, She's struggling not only with this cancer, but he said um, his biggest prayer for her is that she is able to, you know, love on her family. Like, you know, amidst the frustrations, sometimes we, we lash out on those whom we love, but he, he said that like, we could pray for anything for her, is to pray for her heart to be softened so she could get along more with her family, not only just him and her daughter, but, you know, she's struggling to get along with her own son. So, so, so we, we definitely want to pray that those relationships are mended, especially at this time when she's going to need those people to lean on while she's going through these treatments. And then, of course, we're going to continue. Oh, before we pray for all those situations in the city of Lakewood, we really want to pray for these streets that we, we, we come here and worship. I mean, there's a lot of things. I grew up in this neighborhood, and I mean, it, it's heartbreaking to see what's happening amidst this this radius of Iver, that's our neighborhood, the little Iver neighborhood in this little city of Lakewood. But uh, my brother Rob just actually gave me a call or texted the group earlier. He's struggling right now with, uh, his heart is inflamed because he thinks something's going on with his lung. So he got a, a CAT scan appoint, appointment coming up, but right now he, he thought he was gonna make it to church and he woke up having trouble breathing. So, so, so we're gonna take all these things and that um, all to be, all before the Lord. So if you guys could join me by um, bowing your heads and opening your hearts. Uh, Father God, Lord of heaven and earth, Lord, we just come to you knowing, knowing that you draw near to those who need you, Lord. Whether they be in a season of praise or a season of prayer, Lord, Lord, we, we, we pray that every single person that draws near, draws near to you draws nearer, Lord. Lord, that they don't try to lean on their own understanding, Lord, but they lean on you. Lord, we are so grateful and thankful for seasons, Lord, because seasons come and they go, but we are most thankful for you who remain the same always, today, and forever, Lord. Lord, we want to bring our brothers and sisters before you, Lord, and ask, ask that you heal them, whether it be healing and virtual addiction for all those that may be yeah, dealing with that struggle, Lord. Yeah. Or whether it be somebody who is struggling with anger in their hearts. <clears throat> that, you know, just, just, just come alongside them and help them to reconcile the relationships to those who, who are closest to them, Lord. Lord, we, we pray for those who may have been promoted to a, to a higher calling, Lord. We got others in here that may be starting a new job. Yeah. We got a brother Morgan who just got promoted to, to a higher position in his job, Lord. And, and all those things with, with responsibilities, Lord, there, there comes a heavy weight of, of knowing that we need to honor you in that leadership role. Lord, yeah. Lord we pray that he leads as a servant leads, that he has servant leadership, Lord, that, that he is able to come alongside his workers and bless them to be a light for them, Lord. Lord, we continue to pray for Jamie as she's just trying to get a job closer to home. That we continue to pray for finances to be replenished for our brother and sister, Lord. Lord, we, we, we continue to lift up those who are going through treatment right now for cancer. As our brother Rick is going, as, as other people are going. Lord, there's so many prayers just amongst this little flock, Lord. But no matter how little the flock, our shepherd is great. Because you are the shepherd, Lord. You are the head. You are the one that comes alongside us and, and, and reveals to us mercy, grace, love. Lord, lavish this congregation, Lord, with your mercy. 
then be with all of them. Praise all your name, Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right, guys. Also, there's a couple more announcements. Uh, teens, we got a class for you. Jack's prepared a lesson, but that lesson won't start till just before the sermon. So right before the sermon, that's when you guys be released. So hang out, hang tight. Come back after the hello, how you doing? And then hang out with us for the offering and the praise. And then that way, once the sermon is getting ready to start, we'll dismiss you to go meet up with them in room 208. Of course, during the hello, how you doing? Feel free to take the babies. Um, actually, the babies, can you guys hang tight? Because I don't have somebody that will be able to watch the babies right now. <laughs> huh? Did you already go back there? So Caroline is already back there. So if you got babies, feel free to go back there. I thought she was going to stay here for, I didn't tell you guys, because the uh, dedication is happening today, right? Yeah. So I didn't know she was going to stay here for the dedication. We got a little treat after now, because we're going to do a baby dedication. So I thought I thought the ladies that are normally back there are going to be in here with this, this baby. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I need somebody to go back there. But um, yeah, so feel free to take the babies and the, uh, the five to 12 year olds back there during the hello, how you doing? But I guess the dedication is now, so I guess we don't really need to worry about it. We're going to do it right after the thing. So she can come back if you want to go get her. She can partake in the whole thing. You know, what time are we going to do the dedication? We're going to do it, we're going to do it right now, unless your daughter's... Let me call her. Let me I'll talk to Lovely. <laughs> see, see, we can do it after... Keep talking, man. Keep talking. <laughs> Stop. We can always do it after the service, too. That kind of looked back, and I was like, I don't see no kids about it. <laughs> oh man, did you guys want to see what? Oh yeah, just a reminder, we say this all the time. Turn off your cell phones, guys. You know, uh, turn them on silent. Come to our Bible study at 6 p.m. You know, it's really going on. But what we're talking about right now is here at New Life in Christ Church, we, we, we dedicate our children. We, we don't baptize them, right? Because we think that baptism is a, is a, that, that's a personal decision that they're going to make when they understand why they're being baptized. But we, as a church, know that Jesus said, bring the children unto me, right? So, so we want to always be willing to dedicate our children to him, to promise him that we're going to do our best to show our babies a new life in Christ. Amen? Amen. So, so, so the, the goal was, we're still waiting on her, so we might have to do it after service. So we do have to do it after service. You know, we invite you all to partake and stay, and that's cool too. We just, what is that called? We pivot. Right? Like, no, 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 no. Is she here? Yeah. All right, they're here, so I'll just I'll be like, hey, I'll, how you doing? How you doing? I'm just kidding. But this is, this is who we're going to. And then if you guys have babies, you guys want to be dedicated. I got to dedicate my baby, so I know we push it off, right? I got three babies in my wife's up. So, so when are we going to dedicate ours? I was like, soon. <laughs> yeah, you know, like, you know, yeah, I'll drop the ball on that one, Pastor Duran, right? But, but, but like, potentially... If you guys feel the Lord is leading you to want to uh, back, or not, dedicate your uh, your babies, come talk to me, talk to Pastor Jack. And, and, and the idea behind it is, we it's a vow. You know, don't, it's something we take serious. Um, you know, like when I was younger, I uh, baptized, right? Like in a sense, my my uh, my son or my daughter, my sister's son. You know, and I became the godparents, and I thought that was something really cool. But I didn't really understand the aspects of it, or, or what, what I was really doing. And I took a quick class, and then I went up there, and I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a baptized. I'm going to be his godfather. But then in doing so, I didn't understand the, 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 the weight of it. Like the real reason why I was doing it. It would have been better if somebody explained to me, you know what? You're going to tell God, you're going to promise God that you're going to be a, a godly uncle. You're going to be an uncle who's going to reveal to him and show him what's the right way of living. Mm-hmm. You know, and that's why we want to re- re- rethink the way we do things here is say, hey, well, why don't we just dedicate our children and tell the Lord that, hey, we promise. We promise that we're going to be the example. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because I, I can honestly can tell you like this. And as sad as it sounds, if you're a pastor, right? Like for a long time, I wasn't that example for my nephews or for my nieces, right? Like I, I, I sat there and I just did whatever I wanted and didn't care. You know, I showed them that like there, there was, there wasn't anything extra. That, that, that all, like all the, all the, all you had to do was sign a piece of paper and then, and then it's good to go. Like what? What are you talking about? Like I, I already baptized him. I don't need to do anything else in this young man's life. And what was a shame was I missed out on an opportunity to glorify God and, and, and to, to really impact a young man's life or young lady's life. And that, that, that's why we want to take it seriously when we dedicate a baby. Or the only way? 
how they're going to address or they want to do it at the end? At, at, at the end of uh, mm -hmm. the service? All right, cool. Well, now you know a little bit about why I want to dedicate people. <laughs> well, then how we use this time to go and get a drink of water, some cold water, some donuts. Who bring the donuts, by the way? Thank you so much. I've been doing Little Debbie's because, oh, thanks, my brother. I've been doing Little Debbie's because I like Little Debbie's, and when I go there, it's too early, so no good donuts are made. I'm not going to bring you guys gross donuts. I'm just letting you all know. You know, I'm, I'm all like, look at this bus. I don't want this. You know what I mean? Little Debbie's my homegirl. Okay. But, but no, yeah, go get you a Little Debbie's, get your donut, go to the restroom. we got 10 minutes, so potentially that means we'll be back here um, at 11.47. Actually, be back at 11.45, and we'll get, we'll get going. Amen? Amen. Thank you, guys.
morning. Good morning. Uh, I'm just going to pray for all of you can stay seated. Uh, so we pray for the offering. So I was working um, yesterday, and a young man gave me this. So if you see me walking around, and my money's not falling out. It's just like it's a nifty little book of John. And the way he approached me, he's like, hey, I got some money for you guys. And he uh, presented the Gospel of John. Um, but it was interesting, and it's been interesting uh, since, you know, uh, praying for God, praying to God, and and doing the offering. What is the, because it, it ca it's catchy, right? And then people are like looking at it like, hey, your money's falling out. Um, but what, the love of money, what is it? The root of all evil. So... Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The love of money, I should have said. The love of money is the root of all evil. Um, and, it, you know, Scripture keeps telling us that God loves a cheerful giver. And also, that you can't serve two masters, right? So if you worry about money, or if you're chasing money, before praying to God and giving thanks to God and being grateful to God, are we being cheerful givers? Yeah. Right? Um, so with that, uh, let us pray and put God first in all you do and watch the, the gates of heaven just pour down upon you and God will fill your storehouses and he will give you what you need. Amen. Dear Holy Father, thank you for today. Thank you for my sisters. I pray the Holy Spirit just embodies them and overfills their cup and, and brings food to the table and clothes on their backs and, uh, to be grateful. Not, not for the materialistic things, but for our spirits, for our souls being saved from condemnation. For what Jesus did on that cross, uh, how can we not walk in joy and in victory every day knowing that we are loved, unconditionally loved. Everything that we have is yours, and, and you want to give us more. We set our own boundaries. We set our, our, our own limitations. When you created this universe, you created the stars, you created the solar system, uh, you, you breathed life into us at birth, and then at being reborn in you. In Jesus Christ, I pray, and I pray that my brothers and sisters uh, give joyfully. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Can I try one more song? Yes. All right. I mean, I get it. <laughs> Father, let your kingdom come. Father, let your will be done. Amen. 
eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place, and also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit, to revive the spirit of the lowly, and to revive the heart of the contrite. For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit would grow faint before me and the breath of life that I made. Because of the iniquity of his unjust gain, I was angry. I struck him. I hid my face and was angry. But he went on backsliding in the way of his own heart. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners creating the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and to the near, says the Lord, and I will heal it. But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet, and its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. Amen. 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 Praise be to God's word. Amen? Amen. Amen. Oh, man. Thank you so much for uh, for reading, brother, and sharing that with us. That is much appreciated. So, hold on. i got to do something really quick. Hopefully it's not mess it up, but i got to turn this on. Because I'm going to play a song for you guys here in a minute. But I'm not super tech savvy, so I should have just had my uh, nephew do this. But well, what are you going to do? You know what? This is, this is always fun when you learn stuff on the, on the new. Oh, and now we'll get back to the slideshow. Yeah, it's still there. Look at that. I'm, I'm learning every day. I didn't even have to call Kenny up here. I thought you were staying just a game. I, I appreciate that. Kenny, I don't know if you guys know this, but Kenny sometimes had to bail me out of them all. Kenny, what did I do? I touched that one. He's like, dude, it's your computer. I'm like, I know, that's the problem, right? <laughs> but you know, like all kidding aside, We've been blessed by doing this series in Isaiah, amen? You know, and we believe that he's called it to rebuke us, to reprove us, and to restore us. Here we're in that latter section where he's restoring us. And we get to hear these audacious statements, these things that you're just like, whoa, that, that's heavy, essentially, right? I don't know if people still say that, but you know, it's heavy. That, 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 that was a lot. I mean, if you guys were here last week, we got to hear Pastor Jack explain to us, like, the dark night of the soul. And he was, he was reminding us that sometimes we're going to feel like we're in a dark place and all alone, but we're not really alone. It just feels that way because what we decided to do is contrary to everything else that we have been taught or everything else that's in this world. Right here, the world is telling us that, oh, you can't do it by yourself. You can't say, well, you ain't by yourself, so you should do it. You got this. Yes, you're going to be sad before you're glad because you got to know where we're at. And before the, before the <laughs> diagnosis, before the healing, you, you got to find out that, what, you're, you're diseased, that you're sick, that you're hurt. 
Before you can be forgiven, you got to understand that you have wronged. Not just anybody, but you have wronged the creator of the universe. You, 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 you deserve judgment. You owe a debt to God. And that shouldn't make you feel in a dark place. But you know what's crazy is what is reminded is that men love the darkness. It was up to most men they to stay there. But here God says, no, that's not the best place for you. You need the light. Let me come in. And, and, and what did Jack, I love the best thing that spoke to me last week when, when, when Jack told us we, we just need to press on. Even when we feel like we can't. And I know a lot of you, I know a lot of you personally, like in your, in your stories, and, and you're just like, man, you know what, Mike? I can't press on no more, man. It's exhausting, dude. If you only knew what I had to do this week, if you only knew what I had to do this morning, I don't want to press on no more. I just want to kind of go sit and be by myself. I don't want to go to church today. You know, everybody's going to be happy, and I'm not. But God's saying, no, you, you do it. Not because you have to, because you get to, and you're going to be blessed by doing it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Today, I titled our message, Revive Our Contrite Hearts. And before we got get into this message, so I like, I like Christian rap. I, you know, that, that's kind of how I roll, you know what I mean? And some of y'all are going to be like, you know, why, is it appropriate to play Christian rap in the church? I think it is. I'm going to, but you know, <laughs> but, but I hope you guys, you know, for, for those who are like, I don't know, I agree with that, I just kind of want you to read the words. It's not about the cool beat and everything, I mean, that helps, but I, I think what, uh, he's not my homie, but you know, homie Lecrae is saying right here, and he's just going to speak to what we're going to be preaching on. So if you guys can give me a chance and uh, lend me your ears, we're going to play this for you, if it works. Oh, you know what?
Right? I, I don't know if you guys heard, but it's, almost, it's the same exact language. Because that's who the Lord has made us to be. Right? It, it ends that little song by uh, putting up this verse. It says, I have only heard about you before, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. I take back everything I said, and I sit in dust and ashes to show my repentance. Like I said, comfort for the contrite. Contrite is just one of these things, right? It's, just, it's, just, it's, a, it's a fancy way of saying broken. It's a fancy way to say repentant. Contrite is, it is the spirit we come when we come to the realization that I, I am so, so sorry. Because we should be so desperate for the forgiveness of God that we should have a contrite spirit where our heart is breaking because we broke our Father's heart. The definition of contrite, a broken spirit, or a broken spirit, a contrite heart, the biblical meaning, I, I borrowed this from you know, Google, because I love Google. <laughs> but a contrite heart or spirit is when a person's inner being or will has been broken so they no longer run after the things they want, but surrender to the things that God wants. A broken heart or will says, I will no longer do this my way or on my terms, but I will surrender to your way and your terms. That's right. We're going to pray really quick before we get any further into the message. Lord Jesus, Father God, heaven and earth, Lord, we give this time over to you, Lord. Lord, use me, speak through me, Lord. Help me to get out of your way. Lord, for we are here not only to hear your word, Lord, but to be doers of your word, Lord. Lord, we pray this all in your name, Jesus. Amen. 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 To revive our contrite hearts. It means that our hearts at one time stone broken, messed up. I actually think that the reason why God uses the broken hearts and the contrite spirit, right? Like, I, I think the reason why he does those things to us because when we, our hearts are so hardened, we, 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 people will be telling us about love and we don't want nothing to do with it. Mm. Remember Pharaoh? Pharaoh's heart was what? Hard. Hard. It was hardened. Those who wanted to do more, couldn't do no more. Because why? Because their hearts began to get hard. You ever spoke to somebody and you're like, man, that's a hard person. They're hard-hearted. Some people would say oh, hard-headed, right? But, you know, your head and your heart, they're connected. Some people like to think, all oh, you Christians, all you guys do is worry about your feelings. And I'm like, oh, that's the contrary. Christians, we actually really think about it because my feelings tell me a lot more worse things than my mind does. My mind tells me that I'm not supposed to do something. My heart says, go for it. Scripture says that the most deceitful thing in known to man is the heart. Our hearts will lie to us nine times out of ten. Our hearts will say, go ahead. It makes you feel good. Do it. Go ahead. You can justify doing that. They wronged you. They hurt your feelings. Because feelings, as, as great as feelings are, and I can't deny anybody's feelings. Don't, 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 don't. I got little babies, and I know sometimes my son, and he just has big feelings. He's a little man with big feelings, right? And I'm learning, though, that even though he has big feelings, I still got to correct him and tell him, son, even though you're feeling that way, you can't do it. Yeah. And what ends up happening is what? He, when, when, when he knows that he's done something wrong, he, his feelings get hurt. And just the other day, he threw a car at his sister, right? And we had, we had a long talk about it. And, he, I mean, he was crying. All he wanted to do was be held with that. Right? He went and said, I'm sorry. And I don't know, get your sorry. Well, we got to stand here. We got to think about this. Because you could hurt somebody. You could hurt yourself. I mean, and I think finally, once he got, I, I could see it in him that he really felt sorry for what he did. I know he learned his lesson. Yeah. And it's hard for me to make him do that, but God wants to do the same thing to us. Because he says, I see that you're hurting, and I see that you're breaking. And see, I see, I, I think he always wants to scoop us up and say, let me just make it easier for you. But he, he knows that's not the best thing for us. If he makes life easy, then what, what, we're not going to appreciate it. We're not going to be able to earn it in a sense. Like, I, 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 I mean, he's building our character all the time. But he says he builds our character through our trials and our tests. God doesn't tempt us. He tests us. He'll test us all the time. Right? Like, and, and, the, and the more you live a godly life or a Christ-living life, he's going to test you even more. 
You know what, what I've noticed is, man, I'm like, man, I got this thing. Once I think I got it like under control in a sense, right? Like I'm like, I got this. I know exactly what I'm supposed to do. He throws something out of left field where I'm just like, I catch myself doing something totally wrong and, and, and it's totally out of character because that's either my old character or something that I don't even remember. And yet, then I'm so broken heart about it. But my broken heart shouldn't be that I hurt that person. You know, like, maybe I wronged my wife. I got, I got her mad. I made her sad. So, so, so I, made, I made it really like one of those things where I was just like, oh, I'm so sorry, babe. Like, you know, please forgive me. Can you please forgive me? But before I even went and asked for her forgiveness, you know what I should have been asking for forgiveness from? It's from God. My heart should be breaking because I didn't just sin against her. I sinned against God himself because I sat here, actually in this church, right here, in front of all my friends and family and said, I'm going to lead her. I'm going to love her. I'm going to take care of her. I'm going to protect her. Sadly, the thing was, was as a husband, I dropped the ball and now I'm trying to make peace with her, amends with her, but I'm forgetting that I'm supposed to be talking to her father in heaven and saying, I'm sorry first to you because I misrepresented you while here on this earth. And that's why he says, you may be contrite right now, but I'm going to build you up. You may be broken right now, but I'm going to build you up. I'm going to get I'm going to make you better because of it. I mean, Isaiah starts with 14, right? It starts with verse 14. It says, and it shall be said, build up, build up, prepare the way, remove every obstruction from my people's way. Why not even build up? He's saying, oh, man. He's saying, once you understand where you're coming from, then you Hold on to your seatbelt. But the thing is, is you're never going to get built up if you never know or never got broke down. And he says, you don't need to be built up if you thought you were just already built. Right? Like, I mean, ain't nobody trying to fix the building that's standing. We're trying to build, fix the building that's falling apart. And it's not until we realize that we're that building. We're, the, we're that person that's falling apart. We should honestly look at each other and be like, man, I'm doing good, but there's a lot of improvement that could be made. Like, right, that, 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 that's the Christian walk. Is It's a never-ending chance to glorify God by growing and, and producing more fruit and, and learning from our mistakes. Because guess what, Christian? You're going to make mistakes. Yeah. It doesn't matter how great you are. Or, you know, our God is great, but we're, we're, we're just going to we're going, to, we're going to falter. But through that, as long as we allow him to use that, we will be better for it. We will build a better kingdom. We will be able to bring heaven to earth. Right? We will be able to show what Christ is doing in our lives. He goes in 15 to remind us, but who's saying it? Who's saying build, build up? Who's people? He says, for thus says the one who is high and lifted up, who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place. And also with him who is of a contrite and lowly spirit to revive the spirit of the lowly and to revive the heart of the contrite. God is so lofty. God is so high. God is, you would think he was untouchable, but yet he says, no, no, I'm not untouchable. I'm actually untouchable for those who don't want nothing to do with me, but those who are broken, who are all the way, like the lowliest of the low. And then that's the gracious God we have. He, he, he reminds us who God is. God is elevated. God, he, he, he's God. You can't, you can't place him any higher. Your, your mind can't fathom how high God needs to be placed in, in, your, in your heart and in your mind. And what he's saying, though, he's saying, I'm way up here, but if you're way down there, but guess what? I'm going to come down there with you. I'll, I'll, you feel like you're, you're not even, even able to crawl right now? Well, I'll come and lay with you. That's the kind of gracious God we have. I'll be with the lowly. I will be with the contrite. And not only will I be with them, but I will revive them. I will lift them up. I will raise them. In Psalm 34, 15, 18, talking about somebody who realized the wrong that they've done. And in this, David wronged, you know, he wronged God. But he, he, he wronged a, a woman. And then he wronged his wife. And then he wronged the husband. I mean, he wronged a lot more people, but ultimately he knew as he was looking 
what he done, he said, the, the person I wronged most was God. And in his repentant and contrite spirit, he writes this Psalm 34, and we're going to read 15, it says, The eyes of the Lord are on those who do what is right and good. His ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who sin. He will keep the people of the earth from remembering them. Those who are right with the Lord cry, and he hears them, and he takes them from all their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart, and he saves those who are broken in spirit. So like here, David, at the moment, he, he just... He just did the most horrible things, and he gets rebuked by his prophet and says, dude, you, you know you did wrong. And you know you all messed up. And he's just like, I know. And then he goes and prays, and that's what Psalms, that's what prayer does. Praise is one of those things is God already knows, but he wants you to know. So what we do is we start to pray to him, and then he reveals to us what we need to hear. And as we're praying, all of a sudden we get to remember these promises. Here David thought, I totally wronged God. He wants nothing to do with me. But then he's reminded, he's like, wait a minute. I'm broken and I'm messed up. And God still wants everything to do with me. God still wants to love on me. He still wants to be with me. Even though I jacked up. Even though I messed up. Don't, don't let the enemy, don't let yourself, don't, don't let the lies of the world tell you that you can't come back to church, that you can't come back into God's grace because that's a bunch of baloney. And I ain't talking about Oscar Mayer. I'm talking about Bar S. That ain't good stuff. <laughs> nah, you probably have some Bar S. That's good. Yeah, but, 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 but you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's, just, it's just one of those things he, he's saying, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you even though you did. He said, like, because I, I mean, I have people all the time. Oh, I want you to come back to church. Man, if you know what I've done. I said, like, I don't know what you've done, but God knows. And he, he cares. He cares enough to say, come back. Like, you don't have to say, oh, God knows and he don't care. No, no, God cares. That's, that's the opposite, right? No, God cares. And he cares enough to tell you and convict you that, yeah, you shouldn't have done it. Yeah, you, you should feel bad. He wants you to feel bad about sinning, guys. That's, that's a good God. That's a good father. You don't want your father to, or you don't want your son to just kind of go along doing whatever he wants because it makes him feel good. Because it, what is the only thing going to do? It's going to destroy him. Right? You're not going to let a five year old smoke cigarettes. Well, hey, this, man, you know, I was going to give him the pass, but he really likes the way Marvel smells. You know what I mean? And no, you're going to be like, son, no, stop smoking. And then all of a sudden, once they're 18, you're like, well, you know, I. I really can't tell him now. Hey, heck, no, you gave him birth. My mom would tell me, I gave you birth. I'll tell you whatever I want to tell you for the rest of your life. Amen. And God's saying, I created you. I'll tell you whatever I need to tell you. But the thing is, is the more we ignore him, the more we decide we don't want to hear him, what happens is our hearts get harder. They get harder. Until they're stone. And he says, eventually, it don't matter how many going to tell you, you ain't going to hear him. And like any loving father, he said, my door is open, but we'll do what we're going to do. I mean, that, 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 that sounds hard, right? Like, I mean, but the, that's the truth. Like, as much as I'm, I want to grab my kids, kicking and screaming, and bring them to do what I want them to do, he ain't going to do it. If I, pull, if I pull my nephews here into church every Sunday by their ear, they ain't going to hear not one word I say. But if I start to show them what church is doing in my life, and they start to see how it's impacting everyone else's lives, they might just on their own accord come. Because all we can do in church is, is invite. God's going to be the one that revives. God's going to be the one that restores. God's going to be the one that does it. I, I love that. It takes a little bit of that responsibility away from us, right? Like, all we got to do is stay in our lane and encourage those to get in there so they can go to the right place. Like my brother was telling me earlier, he's like, it's important for people to know the truth. So if they don't know the truth, they may not have tomorrow to receive it. And then today might be their last day. They might just jump in the car and get blow up. No, I'm saying watch too many movies. But you know, like, and they could go and get an accident, right? Some so, some can go wrong. So it's, it's pivotal for us to tell them now. But here's a here's another. Psalm from David. Here he's he's asking for forgiveness, right? He's going to the Lord. This is in Psalm 51, 14 through 17. He says, Deliver me from my blood guiltiness, guiltiness, 
O God, the God of my salvation. Then my tongue will joyfully sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. For you do not delight in sacrifice, otherwise I would give it. You are not pleased with burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart. O oh God, you will not despise. Sin. The true sacrifice, or the, the, the thing that God's going to want most. He doesn't want us, I mean, yes, tithe, because that's an amazing way of worship. Sacrifice your time. Give your time. Yes, that's an amazing way to worship. All those things are God-honoring and a blessing. But he's saying the most God-honoring thing is to realize that you need forgiveness from an almighty God. He's saying the thing that you are most pleased with is when I go up to my Heavenly Father in my own private, probably my own room, right? Have you guys ever seen the war room? Yeah, the old prayer closet, right? You go into yourself and it's just you and God. And you say, I am sorry. I am so sorry because I have wronged you. I have came against you. I did this to you. He's saying that's, that's one thing God's never going to be displeased with. He's saying, because why? Because I could be sinning like no tomorrow, and then everybody could look at me like, oh, well, he's doing great. Look, he just dropped all kinds of money in the offering plate. Oh, he's, he's doing all this stuff on volunteer wise but you know if he's at going home and he's living an opposite life God's going to see right through that we are to be genuine in what we do it's just that right heart motive like I always tell people unabashedly is you got to make sure you have the right heart motive before you do anything I ain't going to force nobody to come and serve, but hey, if you want to come and serve, I hope you're serving out of the right attitude, right? Because God is going to bless it, and you're going to be blessed for it. But if I try to, I, you know, not call it out any names, but I bet you're just like, well, if you really love Jesus, you would, you would watch our kids. <laughs> right? Like, you guys are going to be like, you know what? Like, I don't like that church. What are you going to try to finagle me into, like, serving? I'm going to tell you, hey, if you can't do it, somebody else will. But you'll be blessed by doing it. Yes. That's the idea. Like, right? Is, hey, sometimes, hey, well, you, you really love God if you give. Some, some of you might not be able to give. But I'm going to say, but if, but if you give what you got, God will give you more. Because you can't out give a giver. Amen? Right. Yeah. That, that, that's the thing. It's just God's not going to force you to do anything, but he's going to bless you when you do it for the right reasons. And that's what people were doing with these blood sacrifices. That's what Israel was doing all these times. They were like, God, he loves us. Like, we should, we burn rams, we burn bulls, we're killing all these things. Like, he loves us, and God's like, you're missing the point. You're sacrificing all these animals that are innocent because you guys can't put your check in, or put your sin in check. You guys are just continuously sinning because you think it's enough to just try to throw things at me or just do the steps. <clears throat> He's saying it's not about doing the steps, it's about changing your life. It's about being transformed by the Holy Spirit. It's about you becoming a new creation in Christ. Amen? Come on, I get be with me. Amen. Amen. Verse 16 it says, For I will not contend forever, nor will I always be angry, for the spirit would grow faint before me, and the breath of life that I made. He's saying, Me as God, I'm not gonna always be angry with you, because if I stayed angry with you, you wouldn't make it that long. You're 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 mortal. So, so eventually you're going to decay. He's saying, so just know I'll forgive you before time runs out. But now you need to ask for that forgiveness before it gets too late. In Psalm 130, 138, it says, Oh, Lord, I have cried to you out of the deep places. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears hear the voice of my prayers. If you, Lord, should write down our sins, oh, Lord, who could stand? But you are the one who forgives, so you are honored with fear. I wait for the Lord. My soul waits, and I hope in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than one who watches for the morning. Yes, more than one who watches for the morning. Oh, Israel, hope in the Lord. For there is loving kindness with the Lord. With him we are saved for sure. And he will save Israel from all their sins. I, 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 I love Psalms. Yes. You'll notice I'm always, I'm always breaking them out. Right? Because I, I, don't, I can't put into words how much that God is just trying to reveal something. He just wants me to say something. 
You're like, Mike, you say more than you need. But no, no, no. I want to be intentional, so I, I find psalms to kind of help me do it. And that, that's, that's what I'm saying is we should be like a psalmist. We should be like somebody who is in mourning over a sin that we're just like say, I, I'm just waiting for God to change what's going on in my life. I'm waiting on pins and needles. I'm waiting with the anticipation that God is going to do something with me. That this can't be all there is because I know there's so much more because my God is good. So I look in the mirror and I know I may have messed up, but he, but, I, but I'm going to keep on waiting. I'm going to be more with more anticipation for him to do something than any time, uh, any more than. Sorry. Hold on. Nah, all right, I've been talking a lot. I'm getting a little tired. <laughs> but I should be able to look in the mirror and say, Lord, this is the time you're going to do more than ever after I have done messed up. Because now that I've messed up and I come back to him with a contrite heart, not saying go mess up so he can bless you. I'm saying that when you do mess up, that's when we should search him most. Like, I, like, I mean, what did, what did Adam do when he first wronged God? He ran away and hid himself in shame. Covered himself with big. What did God do? Adam, where are you? You think an omniscient God doesn't know where omnipresent God doesn't know where Adam is? He knows exactly where Adam is. He's like, dude, I can see you. Come on, where are you at, man? Come on, you. That's like, I never taught you how to play hide and seek. Come on, man. <laughs> no, but like, the idea is you wanted Adam to say it in his own words where he was at. You wanted Adam to come to the realization that, Lord, I wronged you. Lord, I sinned. Lord, I disobeyed. In verse 17, says, because of the iniquity of his unjust gain, I was angry. I struck him. I hid my face and I and was angry. But he went on backsliding in the way of his own heart. He said, I got angry. You know what my kid does when dad gets angry? He goes and hides. He's like, oh. <laughs> takes off. I'm like, son, son, where you at? You know what I mean? But like, you know, in, in that moment, like, if my son kept on backsliding, that, 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 that's unfortunate. But hopefully I'm able to find him and love on him so that way he stops the backsliding. Because what is happening is God's saying, I was angry and you had every right to fear me because I'm your father. But I was, I was ready to come and show you what not to do and to be with you. But he said, as much as, as much as I was trying to teach you the best, you just kept on doing what they, he's talking to his children of Israel, but he's talking to every sinner. You just kept on doing what you wanted to do. You kept on doing what made you feel good. But he says, watch this. I have seen his ways, but I will heal him. I love that. Right? Because like I said, my son, he takes off and he's sad and he's crying. I've seen what he done wrong and I know where he messed up. But then I'm going to come alongside him. We have a rule in my house. Is I go and, if my son's in timeout, I'm in timeout. I, I go and sit with him in timeout. And then we figure it out together. It sucks because, you know, there's football season coming. I want to watch the Broncos game, but here we are sitting together, and we're trying to figure it out. But I think there's something to it. God is trying to say, I'll, I'll sit with you, and I, we'll get through it. Like, quit hiding from God. God's not hiding from you. If you think God's not talking to you, you just got your Bible closed. If you think he's hiding from you, you just ain't looking. God's not hiding, you hide. God's not running, you run. There's something, that, there's something about accountability church that we want to exercise in this church that says we are the reason that something's going wrong. God's not. God is the one that's going to make it right. Amen? Amen. He says, I will heal him. I will lead him and restore comfort to him and his mourners. Creating the fruit of the lips. Peace, peace to the far and to the near, says the Lord. And I will Heal them. Getting back because you got a part of life. I can't even talk about it. Like that. Well, you know, like, you, you know, like, I think Isaiah, there's, there's a lot of relevance to kind of what we're going through in our own life because Israel, here they were, children of God, and they, 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 they messed up. And then they kept on just blaming God. Here in Hosea, there's this verses 1 to 3, it says, Come, let us return to the Lord. He has heard us, but he will heal us. He has cut us, but he will cover the sword. After two days, he will give us a new life. He will raise us up on the third day. 
eh, that we may live before him. So keep on trying to know the Lord. His coming to us is as sure as the rising of the sun. He will come to us like the rain, like the spring rain, giving water to the earth. He's saying, God, yes, God may cause calamity in your life, church. I'm just letting you know. He's the one that signed off on it. That, that's a tough. Well, I don't think we can say that, but I hope we don't get in trouble. But God will allow calamity in your heart and in your life because he needs to make you better and build your character. Amen. He needs to do that because without doing that, you will not know and you will not learn. He had to do it to Israel. He had to do it to his children. And he will continue to do it because he's a good God who cares. Yes. Who Amen. cares enough to make sure we know better. Because he reminds us at the end in verse 20 and 21, he says, But the wicked are like the tossing sea, for it cannot be quiet, and its waters toss up mire and dirt. There is no peace, says my God, for the wicked. There's no peace. No peace for the wicked. That's stuff like the wicked can find peace if they repent and come to him. But he's saying, if you continue in your wicked ways, you continue to sin against me. If you continue not to ask for forgiveness, you will not receive peace. You'll receive the opposite of peace. I mean, he promised in the second Chronicles, if my people who are called by my name put away their pride and pray and look for my face and turn from their sinful ways, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sins and I will hear their, heal their land. He's, he promises left and right that he's saying, all you got to do is ask for forgiveness. Because blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, the only thing that can't be forgiven, what church is the one that isn't asked. If you don't ask for forgiveness, you can't be forgiven. That's the whole idea of having a contrite spirit. That's the okay, worst team you guys can come up here. I'm going to end with this verse. But that's the idea of having a contrite spirit. That's the idea of having a broken heart. It's saying, you know what? I know I have wronged you. I know I've sinned against you. I know I need forgiveness. And he says, no matter what the sin, no matter what you have done, I will forgive you. And I will heal you. And I will take care of you. He says, but until then, I'm not going to forgive you without you asking that's just my daughter. She's coming up here. <laughs> but I'm going to end with this because I just, I, just, I just love this verse. It's in Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. It says, Be full of joy always because you belong to the Lord. Again, I say, be full of joy. Let all people see how gentle you are. The Lord is coming again soon. Do not worry. Learn to pray about everything. Give thanks to God as you ask him for what you need. The peace of God is much greater than the human mind can understand. This peace will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. All right, if I could have a recap them up here. Oh, we're ready up there. Uh, <laughs> you need to close your prayer. If you guys can stand and pray with us. We were doing the closing prayer, all right? And yeah. the Heavenly Father, Father God, thank you for this time that we're blessed with to be in your presence. Father God, help us to remember throughout this week while we're working, we're going to school, or wherever we may find ourselves. Remind us that the time together and our time with you is what matters most. Thank you for my brothers and sisters. Thank you for this church and this beautiful smile that we get to just be blessed with every morning, Father God, that we get here on Sunday and throughout the week. Thank you for the, the way they serve without hesitation because of the love and kindness that you put in, in their hearts. We praise you for this church and for the fellowship of it. I pray that we seek your guidance, we read your word, receive your grace, and give thanks and give you all the glory. Amen. Amen.
come if you want to stay. We're going to do a baby dedication. Mm. And that's always a great time. Mm. Child's life to God's will. 
I, I, I always want to clarify that because it is up to you guys. I, we, we know, and we're going to make some promises here that I'm going to repeat. Because we know it's up to us to be the example. What we, we always say is, God, our kids don't do what you tell them, they do what you show them. And if you want your daughter to be raised in the church, then you come to church. If you want your child to be Christ following, then you follow Christ. I mean, that's the idea. If, if you want your kid to be a basketball player, you know, maybe play basketball. Probably helps if you're a little taller. But, <laughs> you know, then you get the idea. We lead by example. Right? In Proverbs 22, 6, it says, Start children off on the way they should go, and even when they are old, they will not return from it. This is they're never too young or too little to start showing them the right way of living. You teach them how to respect. You teach them how to love. You teach them how to forgive. One of my favorite scriptures, right? We forgive us because we've been forgiven much. We show mercy because we've been given mercy. There's, 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 there's implications. These are not just bumper sticker things that, like, God says, oh, this will sound good. You put it on the back of your car. He's saying, live this way because it's a good way to live. And third John, chapter 1, verse 4, it says, I have no greater joy than to hear that my children are walking in the truth. Here Paul's talking about his children in the faith, but I think we could all as parents attest to the fact that we want to see our children doing God's will. That when we look at them, we will look and they say, there's something different about that kid. That kid must have love in the home. And I'll, and I'll, I'll say unabashedly, unashamedly that you will know love if you know the love of God. In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1 to 4, it says, Children, obey your parents and the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother. This is you, brother. <laughs> Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with a promise, so that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy a long life on the earth. But also remind us that fathers do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. And that goes to fathers and mothers. We, we don't make it too unachievable. Uh, right, like I was joking about the basketball thing, but if my kid only grows to be five feet, it'd be unattainable if I'm like, you need to be the next, you know, uh, what's your, Galvin, right? Like, you know, the big tall guy. You need to be the next Shaq. Like, like some of them say that there's no way I can do that. They already said them to fail. But you will never, as a father and a mother, we'll never tell our children to do something we can't do. That's what it's saying. Don't, don't, don't expect more of them than, than yourself. And if you're going to do something, then you can tell them to do it. But if you're going to tell them to do something that you can't do yourself, then you're exacerbating them. You're making it impossible. And the man who lives in a life in such where they can, they can achieve the things you know, that God has wanted them to achieve. So now we're going to get into this dedication, this promise, this vow. And, and, and you guys will be able to repeat, but this is mostly for the parents. You guys are going to come alongside the parents. Because right? mom, dad, you guys, and brother, you guys are going to be right there with this Bible. You're going to show her what these things, and illustrate what these things are. Right? We're going to, and this, this one's for like everyone, is that we recognize Isabella as a gift of God and give heartfelt thanks for God's blessing. We as a whole church acknowledge that. Yes. Because you, you inherit a church family. You come to church here, then it's a family. And that means that we promise as a church, church, <laughs> that, that, you know, if Isabella sees you down, walking down the hallway, that we're not, what, gossiping. We're not backbiting. We're not over saying bad curse words and things like that, right? Like, I mean, that sounds like simple things, but we want to be an example as a church. Yes. But you guys want to do more than that. Because we're one of the extended family, you know, and, and church family, but you guys are saying, we're going to come alongside you, Albia, you know what I'm saying? We're going to really help you show her what it is to live a family life. So, I'm, I'm going to ask you guys, to, to, to repeat after me, in a sense. Then we promise as a family to help you surrender all Roman things and put our hope so in Jesus. All right. This is just for 
very fair. We pledge and we promise that with God's help, that will bring you up in discipline and instruction in the Lord, making every effort to faithfulness, patience, love, to build the word of God into your life. So for the parents, you do, you join into your brother, you're gonna be right there. Say it's both it's all for the parents, so you're gonna help. So this is just all on your parents. But we promise through God's blessing for the physical, emotional, intellectual, and spiritual need of you as well. And then we all will say this, right? We promise, we promise to God to God be an example. To be an example in Isabella's life. In Isabella's life. Showing her. Showing her a new life in Christ. A new life in Christ. Christ. Woo! Amen. Amen. Guys, you come up here and take a picture. You don't have to do it from way down there. So thank you guys for allowing us. Hey guys, you guys have a blessed Sunday. Thank you for all these days.